Boys and girls, today I want to show you how to get your snare fat and punchy. I'm pretty sure you've been there, right? You record a snare or you work on a snare. You just feel like it needs that certain <clears throat> down there. And it's hard to get it right, I know. Today I want to show you how to EQ your snare, how to get it fat and punchy, but not boomy and cloudy. A big difference, but a thin line. Here we go. And as you might know, I've done quite a few videos on this channel about snare drums. I just love talking about snare drums in rock and metal. And that's maybe because the snare drum is just the backbone of your drum tone. It's the most defining part of your drum tone, especially in metal. I know kick drums are important in metal, but there's not a lot of tonal variety in kick drums and metal kick drums. You know, the typical metal kick drum, for a reason, sounds like, I once described this as a typewriter making love to a sub drop. And I still think that's a pretty good and poetic description, don't you think? So we typically have that clicky uh, metal kick drum sound, lots of low end scooped, and then lots of upper mid range to make it cut through a wall of guitars. But when we talk about snare drums, there's a lot more variation. They can be higher, can be lower, can be dry, can be ringy, can be with a lot of reverb or without. So it's more fun to talk about snare drums, I guess. And that's what we're gonna do today. And what you are about to watch right now is another snippet from a brand new course we've just released inside Cola Audio Cult, where I show people how to EQ snare drums. And what you are about to watch is the part where I show how to add punch to your snare drum without making it sound boomy. Let's get started, enjoy. So this is the raw and unprocessed top mic. I think this is one of the most iconic snares ever. It's the Ludwig Black Beauty. I think the five and a half inch version, if I remember correctly, it's not tuned very low. Have another listen. It sounds very good for unprocessed, but of course it sounds a little, let's say honky, and it needs more punch, it needs more low end. And also, it could have a more clear attack. And these are the two things I want to fix, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's open a fresh instance of Pro-Q 3. Here we go. And I can highly recommend to use an EQ like this that shows you the frequency spectrum of the snare. That makes it a lot easier to do what we are about to do. But let's have a look at the snare first. So this is the frequency response of our snare. If we look at the left side around here, this is where the punch lives, okay? We're at the low end of our snare. This here, maybe starting at 2K up till here, is where the attack lives, also very important. And in between, in the mids, maybe starting around 500, going up to 1K or 2K, we got a more lo-fi sounding, rather woody sounding, slightly honky sounding area that is responsible for the ring of the snare. So those are the three sections we have. And I wanna start with the punch, because I told you that the punch and the attack of the snare are coming from the closed microphones. We can already see a lot on this frequency graph here. So this frequency here, what is it, 194, which, which is, by the way, pretty high, is our main fundamental. This is where your punch actually lives. So if you want more punch, if you want more low end, this is the frequency to start with. So let's boost this. Let's use some extreme settings for now. And now it's getting interesting because you can always see some more peaks above the main fundamental. This one and this one and maybe even this one. This is already a little too high with 455. But here, in the upper bass region, let's say between 2 and 400 hertz, and these bumps here, these peaks, are either 
harmonics of the main fundamental, could be a fifth or an octave, or they are resonances coming from the shell or from the head itself. But that doesn't really matter. But what you need to understand is that they usually work against you and your metal or rock snare drum sound. They make the snare sound rather cloudy and they will in a way cover and camouflage your main punch. So let's have a listen to that first one here. And we don't want that. That is a resonance coming from the upper head. Pretty extreme setting once again, but I think that really helps. Let's continue. Not really nice either. I think that's a resonance coming from the shell. Let's just reduce it a little bit, but not as extremely. And now let's have a listen to what we got. So that is a big difference. It sounds a lot more punchy, but the punch also sounds a lot more clear, if you ask me. So these are very extreme settings, but you get the idea. I think we can reduce that one. We don't have to go to 17. Um, so we can go back to 12 dB here. That looks better. Still quite extreme. But you get the idea. You have the main fundamental, which is giving you the punch, and then you have resonances and harmonics in the upper bass regions that will make your punch more cloudy, that will cover the punch, the fundamental punch. And you want to go against that. I forgot to say, anything that is below that fundamental punch frequency is not really needed. So we can add a low cut here, but in this case, I think there's not really a lot happening, so we don't really need it. But feel free to low cut here if you want, no problem. All right, I hope I could help you a little bit to get closer to the snare drum sound that you have in your head. If you want to learn more, if you want to watch the entire course where I not only EQ the low end, but all the other frequencies as well, and show you how to EQ the ring of your snare, the attack of your snare, the presence of your snare, and so on, check out the link to Cola Audio Cult. Become a member of the greatest academy this world has to offer, including the underworld. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great place. Metal Academy with lots and lots, tons of courses about recording and mixing metal music. Not only snares, guitars, bass, vocals, uh, all the other stuff. And we've got free multi-tracks so you can start mixing and start working right away. And as you might know, I've done quite a few videos on this channel about snare drums. I just love talking about snare drums. I've already done a video where I've shown you how to mic a snare drum because a lot of people don't know what what actually happens if you move a mic on a on a snare head. I've done a video comparing two snare drums, exactly the same pearl free floating snare drums, only difference being the material of the shell because a lot of people overestimate the influence that the shell material has on your final snare drum tone. Uh, I did a video comparing different drum heads because the drum heads are actually very important, so is the tuning. The drum heads define how bright or dark your attack sounds, um, they define how much ring you have, a lot of things. There's a list below to all the snare drum videos, and yeah, there, I think there are two videos where I was giving away free snare drum samples, Just click below. And one more thing, we still got our vintage death metal mixing contest going on. There's another link below to ratemymix.com where you can download some amazing 
vintage multitracks, death metal multitracks recorded in New York, uh, Long Island, New York in 1997. And we got more than $70,000 of gear in prices, okay? So you could win a lot of cool stuff from Eve Audio, Austrian Audio, uh, Audient, and a lot of other cool companies. So check out that link, so many links. Links to my snare drum videos um, and links to my academy and links to the mixing contest. So much cool stuff. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to this lovely channel, right? And don't forget to tell your grandma about it. She's going to love it. And anything I forgot? Ah, there's one thing I forgot. If you want to, if you download those multi-tracks, um, they were recorded at a studio called Sabella Studios in New York in 1997 and someone just told me that there was a fire in that studio so there's another link below in case you want to donate something to that studio to that place they need the money i will do the same thing follow the link and uh yeah donate something so they can get the studio uh going again that would be fantastic thank you very much that's all for today i see you in hell my friends see you in hell motherfuckers bye bye <laughs>